Alright guys, I'm back. This is part two of this video. Um, <clears throat> oh, and uh, re really before I go into it, I'm smoking a cigarette, fucking deal with it. I'm a grown ass fucking man, I'm doing what the fuck I want. And it got me some motherfucking water. Thankfully. Okay. That should help me with how parched I, uh, and we're talking for a straight hour. So where we left off, we are looking at the play guide view tips. This is like how you can end up getting the actual tutorial of the game by reading all this shit. Um, to kind of quote uh, old Ego Raptor Aaron, like Mega Man X. I, I, I think it was X or like Mega Man 3 or some shit like that. One of the greatest games ever because it just throws you into the game, doesn't really give you a tutorial, has you figure everything out. Monster Hunter, since it's also Capcom, somewhat does that as well. They want you to figure everything out. But for those that are, that want their hand held and everything, they did put a minor annoying way for you to get your hand held so you can learn this, that, and the other. And that's what this is right here. So, fundamentals. You got restoring health, stamina, boom, 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 boom. So, let's start up here at the top. I'm not going to read all of this. Pause the video if you want to read it. Hunting tips. Um, <sighs> the biggest tip I can give you, this probably will not uh, say, is try to gather data on the monster before even initiating the first time hunt on it. Like, watch other people hunt it or look up a wiki and stuff so you can learn things about the monster, what it's weak to. And that's the Biggest deciding factor whether or not you're going to be successful your first time or not. But if you're not successful the first time, that's okay. Um, it happens to people. Like, my first time ever uh, facing off against, like, Electrion or Delgio, I end up failing those. Bo both of those, I end up failing those. Just flat out. Because I didn't look up any videos at the time. Um, I mean, I looked at the wiki and gathered info on that, but I didn't know its attack patterns or how it telegraphed, any of that stuff. How brutal those monsters were. <clears throat> so, through failing the first time, by making all the mistakes that I did, I looked back on it, gathered data, and next time I went into the hunt, I was more prepared. I knew what to look out for. And that's how Monster Hunter kind of does it does its whole game mechanics and progression and keeps you coming back through the grind to get things. So, okay, preparing for a hunt. So I want to personally read myself. I break them weak in the monster and sometimes something gets mobility or it's text or some materials. Yeah. Alright, um, let me go a little bit more in depth here with the breaking the monster parts for you. Uh so <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, the way that Capcom does these monsters is let's say the Great Jack or Let's not go with the Great Jaggers. Let's say the Rathalos. 
Um, so you have the Rathalos. It has a overall HP meter that you cannot see. You cannot see it. Uh, I think people can data mine it and everything and come up and tell you what the uh, actual HP of the monster is. When fighting the monster and you're dealing damage to it and you're not breaking off any parts, you're chipping away at that overall health. That uh, The damage that you're doing without breaking any parts, the monster can recover that damage by eating and sleeping. Um, but when you break off parts, it can't, it, it's, uh, it's like when we take damage and as you can still see up there in the top left, there's that little clear area of the health. Um, it's a example or a, uh, an analogy if you want, uh, I'm not sure what's the term to use right now is, um, when you break off the parts and stuff on a monster, it However much damage it took to break off that part, I think determ uh, determines that the monster cannot recover that amount of damage back. <clears throat> so let's say it took, um, and it's, it's obviously going to take a lot more than this, so, but let's say it took 50 damage to break off a, uh, or to cut off the tail of a monster. That 50 damage that when it, uh, when you cut off the tail of a monster, it cannot get that damage, or it cannot get that, uh, it cannot recover, there we go, cannot recover that 50 damage back at all. It's set, boom, done. And if I'm also not mistaken, when you break off a part of a monster, or cut off its tail, break its horn, chip its wing, whatever, um, I think that's also, it does bonus damage to the overall health as well. Do not fucking quote me on that. Um, that's something that you'd have to look at in a wiki for further analysis. So, what you end up getting is people will focus on specific parts of monsters to just go ahead, get those out of the way, get them broken, stuff like that. Like, say, with a Diablos, people will mainly try to focus on its head to break off both its horns, which does serious amount of damage to the Diablos and cannot get the HP back, or they'll end up focusing on the tail and try to cut off the tail. And that's, that's useful uh, for both of them because it'll end up using its tail because it kind of has like a little club on the end of its tail. Um, not only does that limit the range of its tail, but also gets rid of the club whenever you cut off the part of the tail and everything. So it eliminates the weapon that it has. And the horns on a Diablos deal some serious fucking damage. And if you manage to get both the horns off, like, uh, yeah, you can get both the horns off, boom, it will not do as much fucking damage then, but it can still do those attacks that it had with the horns. Um, but when you do get both the horns off, though, you can no longer get a Diablo stuck in a wall. So, sometimes there's pros and cons. So, voice chat, auto crafting in chat. Alright, uh, I actually want to go into this a little bit. So, eating meals at the canteen, uh, to start off with here, uh, when it's talking about food skills, and I, I, I can't show you here in the training area, <clears throat> but when it's talking about food skills, um, when selecting the food, down at the bottom, it'll say like feline polisher, if you would, like if you look at my other videos, it's something I try to end up going for. Um, those are the food skills that pop up and they're not guaranteed that you're going to get them. It's, it's RNG on whether it's going to happen or not. And there are bonuses that, you, uh, that end up helping you out. Like, so, like I said, feline polisher, what feline polisher does is 
on a random chance whenever I got to go sharpen my weapon because it's gone dull, there's a random chance that all I have to do is just one slick with the whetstone and boom, the sharpness is already back at max. No problem. So, uh, generally food will end up giving you a buff like more stamina and more health, but they can also give you a buff of like you do more damage, you take less damage, or I think there's also uh, elemental resistances that you can also get from meals. Um, <laughs> those are all good and dandy, but sometimes the feline buffs, the food skills, end up outweighing those, depending on what they are. And it also depends on if like, you intend on going on into the mission using a demon drug or a... Uh, uh, um, Armor skin? I want to say. I'm, I, I guess I usually refer to those things as armor drugs as well. But uh, if you intend on popping those, <clears throat> um, then you wouldn't want to go for like what you'd see me in my previous videos, where I usually go for the meat platter because it gives me attack up M. Um, if I had a demon drug and everything with me, instead I'd go for like the flip, uh, the fish platter. Or, or chef special or something like that instead. Weapon info. Um, kind of general synopsis of how to use the weapons, I suppose. Or not how to use the weapons, rather uh, what the weapon's about. Hmm. All right, so these are some tips for the specific weapons. Uh, long short, I just want to say this with spirit for us. So if you get your um your uh, demon gauge or uh, spirit gauge, I think it's just called spirit gauge, all the way up to max. Boom, all the way up to max. Do your spirit thrust one, two, three, and maybe four times, and you end up bursting through a shit ton of damage on a monster. That's what I like to do with it. I do here. I want to show you exactly what I was talking about. The long sword is a close range weapon designed for cutting attacks. You can gather your spirit to increase its power. Just gonna take a moment here. What I'm about to do is right trigger and triangle. Do this. And then you can kind of aim it a little bit. And if you hit the monster with that, see what I was trying to do. Oh, God damn it. It's hard to do on this pole. 
Try to hit one of the barrels instead. We're going up. See that? Create some distance and then use so a then... The idea is to hit the monster again. Doing that. And you just keep doing that over and over again. And then you'll get that bar right there. Which essentially just base. And then you end up. Starting back over. But it ends up eating up a crap load of your sharpness when hitting monsters with it. Alright, and because I actually use uh, because I actually use the uh, insect blade, I'm going to give you a um, a personal tip that I kind of figured out. So when facing off against monster, um, most of the insect blade users I've seen end up doing a matter like this. They'll end up getting the attack. Getting the no flinch, getting speed, and then they end up attacking the monster like crazy, like so. And then they'll do their aerial attacks, and they try to mount the monster and everything when that's active. What I intend on doing, since it's gonna take a while for this to wear off. What I end up doing is I try to get the uh, attack boost first. Oop, wrong button. I try to get that. I absolutely try to get that because then my attacks are more intricate rather than just base. And then I either go for 
um, the no flinch or increased speed. Increased speed uh, would be for when dealing with certain monsters. Like, if I'm going up against the Rathalos, definitely try to get the increased speed. Like, you're going to get increased speed anyways because the Rathalos just has such a huge wingspan that you're going to end up hitting those fucking wings. And the increased speed ends up making you jump higher. And, of course, you know, you move around faster with it. Increased speed and whatnot. So I ended up trying to get two of those. Two out of three. And then, on a hidden right trigger, mark the target. And then I like to try to... See, the attack had already worn off. Phone him back, got it. Um, then I try to end up mounting the monster, and if I'm su uh, successful with the mount and it goes down, when it goes down, I get the third. Um, so in this case, it would be no flinch. And no flinch is usually really good because when the monster goes down or it's toppled over, everybody rushes in and just starts waylaying on it, and friendly fire happens like crazy. So the no flinch is great for that. And when you have all three, um, <clears throat> when you have all three, that's when you do your most damage and your most effective for dealing damage. So, that's what I try to aim for. Certain monsters, like uh, the Kuliaku, I really don't give a shit because it's a small monster anyways. They're hard. They are hard to mount because since they are so small... Um, they're kind of hard to aim the aerial attacks on. Uh, but yeah. My little tip for the second half. Alright. Is that glaive tip done? Alright, gunner gear. Whole bunch of things for the slinger. I'm actually going to read some of these myself. Bright boss here. Oh shit! Okay. Next time I'm ever dealing with fucking Rathalos, that's a great idea. Okay, scatter nuts can shot or uh, stun. Slinger torches, torch box. Oh, the torch pods are using the rotting veil, which is one of the maps um, that uh, that's in the full game, not in the beta. And uh, the rotting veil, uh, its whole gimmick is that there's certain areas that's just covered in a blanket of poison cloud or otherwise known as miasma. So you'd use these slinger torches to end up shooting into those blankets or uh, the, those clouds and it'll disperse them. So Alright, I'm going to try to remember that one. Bomb pods. Puddle pot. Oh, okay. Flash bugs. Dung pods. And um, when I was going up against Nergigante, I saw another one. 
called a uh, dragon pod. They're supposedly really rare. Thing what I, in my um in the video I posted where it was a successful hunt with uh, some random magic picked that thing up and total ammo you get is seven. I think it depends on where you hit the monster and um, how many times you hit the monster as well. Um, it will actually make the monster fucking flinch, which is amazing, and does dragon damage as well. I was hoping it would uh, um, give the Nergigante a dragon blight, but it didn't. Wiggly Lichy. Oh, okay. Um, so it's talking about Palico right now. You can give your Palico different armor sets. Um, I don't think they get armor skills for it. Uh, different armor is necessarily just for defense and elemental or resistance. And to just make them look fucking cute is all hell. Um, but they can get different weapons in the beta. There's the, uh, uh, their great sword variant, their hammer variant, and bow variant. And then they have a specialized tool as well and in the beta. There's Vigor Wasp, um, Flash Fly Cage, and a, uh, Shield Spire Shield, or something like that, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, those are all really useful. Uh, I'm not one for using the shield, uh, the shield though. Um, instead, I end up either using the Vigor Wasp or the Flash Fly. And you can tell your Palico to spawn those yourself, because it will pop up on your item bar. Or your Palico will just automatically do it on its own if it's AI says, hey, I should probably spawn one of these. Um, and whenever it's like the Vigor Wasp or the Flash Fly, you can either attack those to make them trigger, or if you have your weapon put up, you can uh, run up to it and press circle and activate the item. So. That would be pretty much as much as you need to know to successfully play the game. Um, the rest of this stuff here, you can kind of try to figure out on your own. So if you want to stop watching the video right now, right now would be the time to do it. Uh, everything else is just kind of side stuff um, to really just communicate with people. That's all it's about. And then there's uh, the options. A bunch of different gestures. I'll just go ahead and show them to you. And the social hubs and everything, like um, uh, in the cantina before you end up uh, doing a mission, you might see a lot of people end up doing these. And it's also another way to try to communicate with people as well.
I don't know if there's going to be more of these gestures or not because um, back when I was playing Try, my favorite one was the Shadow Box one. And if I saw, like, if I ever saw any of my friends just randomly doing the shadow box, I would line myself up with them and get the timing just right, where we're shadow boxing each other, throwing fists at each other, but we keep dodging the fists as well. That, that's something really cool that you can do with that gesture. Then you got your shout outs, there's uh, your base shout outs. And you can add it though. Make them say other things. You got custom ones that you can end up doing. And I think these custom ones, uh, uh, well, manual and custom are both linked to gestures. And then auto ones are, uh, yeah, um, as you can see here. They're triggered whenever things happen in the Dern Dern quest. Then you got some stickers. As for everybody to see whenever you uh, post them. And you can pull up chat this way, and uh, with chat you can do gestures really quickly. Um, you can do your shout outs. <clears throat> There's enlarge and shrink. You got your stickers. You can check the log of it. All part of your system. Um, keyboard is uh, to manually chat. <coughs> I wonder, uh, man, I, I wish the regular PS4 had like an extra USB port because then I would actually plug the keyboard in the son of a bitch. Um, send to recipient, you gotta have somebody on your friends list to send it to. And I'm not sure what all you can change recipient to right there. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just uh, your friends list. Signal, which because there's no fucking mini map or map that I can pull up, you're not going to see anything from the signal. But uh, whenever you trigger a signal, either through that or by going to communication here and the bottom, oops, right there. Um, <clears throat> whenever you trigger that, uh, a, a circle will emit from your marker, or I, I guess, well yeah, your marker on the map. And it'll tell your friendlies where you are, and generally people end up doing that whenever they want somebody to pay attention to something like set a trap or find a monster. You can also set gestures to your radial menu as well. Then, last but not least, to end up wrapping all this up, the option screen is how you find it. You can adjust your mini map here fixed or rotating you can have your head armor show all the time or you can hide it which that's the new feature in Monster Hunter uh, they didn't have that back in a uh, try or try ultimate um, I don't know if that showed up in Monster Hunter 4 4 ultimate or generations um, damage indicators you can turn that on or off uh, if they bother you definitely turn them off it, that's a new thing in the Monster Hunter world. Doesn't bother me really. And it, it is helpful to see if you're making the most um, out of the weapon that you're using because different weapons do different amounts of damage to different parts of a monster. So, so if I turn that off, right, control guide. Top right, it's gone. And you can't even see it because I'm blocking on the webcam. Why didn't I fucking realize that earlier when I was talking about it? Vibration settings. Then you got controls here, directional control type. And tells you a, a little description of everything. Um, sheath. 
uh, dash to uh, wait, switch. Oh, okay. Um, radio menu. So you're a, uh, you, you do a release on the item and it'll make you use the item or it's just when you select the item. Uh, the release, it gives you a little bit more control because if you have it on this, you might miss aim and use a item that you don't want to use. <clears throat> I don't have anything to really say about item control settings. Uh, if you're playing, just go over that yourself. Camera controls. My suggestion is to just leave it as normal. Don't, um, don't really fuck with it unless there's a certain part that just like kind of irks you in a way. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about though. <clears throat> is that you can't change the reticle and the aim assist is not uh, like how aim assist is and FPS is where it kind of makes you aim at the target where it, it kind of moves you to look at a target a little bit better. Um, aim assist, as it says down there at the bottom, just slows down the reticle when you're actually over target. Uh, the auto target, not auto target, but the target settings right here. Um, you have it set to all monsters or large monsters only. Target camera controls. Anyway, as I was saying before, um, when coming across the camera, go through it yourself and find out what feels most comfortable for you. And you got display screen vibration, hub display, and brightness. And then audio, voice volume, BGM volume, sound effect volume, dynamic range, sound uh, output device, 3D audio, if you can, when headphones are selected for audio output, okay. Uh, voice chat, boom. And that's pretty much cover up the basis of everything. Um, when the game actually releases and then there's the... Uh, uh, the whole hub they can go through, you know, like, um, like the, like, uh, 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 the village, I guess, is a way to, uh, refer to it right now, um, that you go to in between quests. I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing a, a little tutorial on that or not. I might, maybe, if... If there's enough info to really have to try to go over for beginner uh, beginner Monster Hunter players to um, uh, end up learning and stuff, I have a feeling when coming into the game, it's going to end up teaching you all that anyways. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much uh, wraps up this video right now, and I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope I was helpful. Really hope I was helpful. And Monster Hunter World releases next Friday, uh, January 26th. And uh, I stream. I don't have a set schedule or anything. Uh, I used to have a set schedule, um, which you'll be in the, uh, in the description. I'll have a link to my own Twitch. But the uh, reason I... The reason why I do not have a set schedule is if I have a set schedule, I feel like I've got to do this, that, and play for this many hours on end. I can't get up and go do other things. Um, and I end up not eating and everything that's not healthy. And then uh, really another way is like if I have a set schedule, I'll end up also playing games. Like Monster Hunter is all I'm going to be playing on my stream. Um, I'll end up doing that off camera as well and then you guys miss things uh so instead i'm going with anytime i'm playing i am going to be streaming anytime so that could be like super early in the morning beyond midnight what have you because i have a fucked up weird ass sleeping schedule like i fell asleep at like i don't know five six o'clock this morning and i just woke up uh 
two hours ago. I woke up two hours ago. I got like fucking four hours of sleep. I don't know why the fuck I woke up. I just woke up. And so I decided to do this. So yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, if there's anything else I can kind of try to figure out in the future, try to give like tips and tricks, I'll, I'll think about it and I'll try to put some stuff together and put out another video for when the game fully releases. But until then, have a nice one, you guys. Uh, see you in the full game.